Hey, Living Thing here for Quantic Gaming, alongside with Tara Babcock. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> so, when did you get here? I got here on the 29th, actually. Um, I was a little bit late. I had like some problems with my planes and stuff, and I wanted to make it to the VIP, um, like little uh, before thing, you know. But I wasn't able to. So sad. Less Starcraft for me. <laughs> what are you doing this weekend? I saw you with a camera. Yeah, I'm actually um, doing a little bit of content uh, just for my own like personal stuff. You know, people liked what I did with uh, MLG. I did like a little um, video of like what kind of goes on um, through my eyes. So like uh, hanging out with like the pros or the casters, um, watching the game and everything else. And people liked it, so I decided to do it again. <laughs> nice. So last time we interviewed you, it's been quite a while, and you just started streaming at the time, and now you've been streaming for. Quite the quite the time we st yeah. you stream steadily too. How has how's that been going for you? It's been going pretty great. I think it's been about six months now. And um, at first, the reaction was kind of just like people didn't know what to think about me. People didn't know if they like were approving of my um, trying to get into the community. But um, now it's it's pretty much positive, especially now that they see that I'm trying really hard to improve. And I've um, I've leaked up. I leaked up, and then I leaked down, and then I leaked up again. So I'm kind of just like I'm on the cusp there between like gold and platinum now. But um, I'm really excited to just keep trying and eventually get into Masters or something, hopefully. And at least be as good as you. Aww. <laughs> well, I've seen you. You've been playing on NA and EU. Do you feel like there's a difference? Do you feel like people are right when they say EU is so much better? <laughs> I actually do feel a little bit of a difference, but it's more like there's a different like ladder meta going on. Like um, In my EU account, I was in gold, and then I um, down-leaked to silver. And I haven't been able to get out of silver, even though I'm like getting into platinum on my NA account. So I feel like it's a little bit harder in that I'm trying to play macro games and everyone's just kind of cheesing me on the EU um, ladder and things are just harder in silver, which is kind of weird. And I'm hoping to get out of there soon because that's just embarrassing. You know? Aww. And I've seen you've been trying to cast some. How has that been? Yeah, that's actually my ultimate goal in the um, community. I kind of want to be a personality and a caster eventually. But at the same time, I realize that I need to have the skill and the knowledge and the analysis um, ability in order to do that and I also need to work on my talking skills as you can tell I'm kind of like ditzy on camera and stuff so um, it's been it's been a long road but I've been pretty open with it I'm doing like um, casting practices where I just kind of cast at home and then um, upload it and I don't really care how bad it is I just want to get like um, critiques from the Team Liquid community and the StarCraft community and um, on top of that I've also been doing um, casting of a live event near my hometown um, and it's a monthly thing. It's a monthly StarCraft thing. And we have um, people from Team Light, uh, NRS, and a bunch of other stuff. So it's actually kind of exciting to get to cast like top-level play while I'm trying to learn as well. That's pretty cool. How <laughs> was your experience there? Was it any different from casting at home alone? Yes, a lot. I actually, people were telling me solo casting is the hardest thing to do. You have to, you know, be the observer as well and um, do it so that it's attractive for the, the viewers and stuff. But um, when I co-casted and I wasn't controlling the camera, I was actually really stressed out about it. It was more difficult and um, trying to, like, my co-caster would be saying something awesome that I'm also noticing, right? And I'm like, oh, I really want to be the one talking about this awesome content that's going on, like, right in front of me, this awesome play. And, like, I want to, you know, be the one, like, being excited about it. And then by the time he's done talking, I'm like, okay, now I had to listen to what he said and reply to what he said and also be looking for new things to talk about. And it's like, oh, it's so much more stressful, actually. So... I actually enjoy the quiet little um, in my room casting thing, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, uh... <laughs> uh, Jen. Uh, <laughs> okay, back to the interview. <laughs> How have the two v twos been going? We haven't played in a while, huh? I know. We need to play. Uh, we were pretty terrible. I mean, I have we even talked publicly about what we did last time? I think we need to talk about that. That's actually a really funny story. Oh my god, y you go ahead. I'm like, I'm blushing now. Okay, I don't remember which, <laughs> what's the name of the map. There's a map where you have a free back door. And so we start walling off, and we don't say anything, and we just keep walling and walling, and we're like, Quite a long wall, huh? Yeah, it was a huge. It's like the huge, like you know, the natural wall type thing, but it's in the back. Like it's the map where um, only one person can take like a back expand, and then the other person has to kind of expand out around the corner. But um, we walled off the back, and until all of the bunker or the barracks were there and stuff, we didn't notice. And I was like, I think we just walled off the back. 
<laughs> it was pretty bad, and um, I think that's something we need to work on. We're pretty ditzy when we play too. Yeah. I don't know. We just keep talking, and then we kind of lose track of time. Yeah, we're like gossiping and stuff, and then all of a sudden there's like a thousand banelings in our door. And it's like, oh. <laughs> I've also caught you playing some League of Legends. Oh, a little bit. I, I was I was kind of coaxed into that because um, all my friends play it, right? And it's kind of more of like the laid back game that you like. It's a party game, kind of like you play with your friends, unless of course you're playing on a competitive level. But um, I don't necessarily like the kind of MOBA genre, but at the same time, it's it's really fun to play with friends and kind of just like play different characters and get different skins, of course, and stuff like that. So I've been playing a little bit. I actually haven't even logged into the account for like three weeks now, though. I'm just really like buckling down and trying to like get up there in. Um, my Terran play. Actually, um, I've been having a problem with TVT, so that's what I've been kind of grinding lately. <laughs> so, how did you feel about the reception from the League community? Did you feel like it was any different from the StarCraft one? It was pretty similar, except for League. Um, like, it's it's crazy, like, how when I stream, I'll have, like, let's say 300 viewers in uh, StarCraft, and then I'll, like, switch in, in the middle to League of Legends because I'm, like, stressed out about laddering or whatever. And um, it turns out that, like, it just all of a sudden, like, landslides into, like, a thousand viewers, and it's, like, why is there so much more viewership in League of Legends? So at the same time, there's more viewership, and then there's also more trolls and more people being, you know, rude and stuff. So that's another thing you have to watch out for in League of Legends. They're kind of, I would say, um, generally, they're a little bit more immature. So um, it's funny stuff, though. It's funny stuff to read. <laughs> oh, and you finally got your Twitch partnership, too. <gasps> that is true. Ah! Want to tell me about that story? Oh, my God. Okay, so... Um, as you guys know, like I, I do modeling and stuff, and I kind of like push the envelope when it comes to modeling. So my stuff is a little bit sexy, you know. I do like the underboob thing and um, like lo lots of not clothes. <laughs> so um, when I first did my background, I kind of um, did it like sexy and stuff. And they told me that it's too sexy, and I actually need to change it, or I'll get you know actually banned from Twitch, right? So I changed it so that it was less sexy and less provocative, but it was still like sexy you know I was wearing like panties but they were bo boy shorts and stuff and they were like um, even though this is okay we really just kind of hold the partners to a higher standard and stuff and they gave me all these guidelines and I was happy to you know do whatever they wanted because you know I wanted to be a part of the twitch community so after I did that they immediately gave me my partnership and it's been great since then did you have to tell like to did you have to take some time away from modeling to do more Starcraft or like how are you balancing things? I actually do like um, I used to do three or four shoots a week um, Kind of stuff that I got from my agency or the model social networks and I had like um, repeat clients and stuff like that And um, I would like shoot like video segments and I was I was pretty busy uh, doing the full-time modeling thing But now I would say I take at least one shoot off a week to just try to fit in I feel like I have to do at least three streams a week if I'm not traveling and stuff so I'll be like, oh, I only have two streams, and I won't have another stream before next week. So I guess I don't really have to do this job, and I'm glad that I had a lot of money saved up so that I can actually like, kind of, you know, pursue my other passion, which is esports. So it's been doing good so far, and um, I kind of feel for people who uh, don't make that much money in esports and they're just kind of starting out and stuff, because that's kind of where I'm at right now. It's more just like a passion for me. At the same time, I want to actually make it something that I could live off of. So I'm doing the thing that I love for a living, mm -hmm. right? But um, I definitely don't have any plans um, to stop being a full-time model at the same time. I kind of want to do both. And even if that makes me, like, extremely busy, I'm okay with that. Because I really just like both. <laughs> do you have any shout-outs you'd like to do? I do! Follow Liv and Pig! Aww. <laughs> follow Tara! Yeah! Um, Twitter.com slash Tara Babcock. Twitch TV slash Tara Babcock. And, yeah, follow all the eSports things. Because eSports is awesome. Follow all the things. All well, thank things. you so much for this interview. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. And make sure to check out the other interviews. This is Levin Pink for Quantic Gaming, signing out.